What place has the most rainy days every year? When it comes to the number of rainy days per year. The winner is again Mount Waialil on Kauai, Hawaii, with up to 350 rainy days annually. What are some benefits of lightning? One of the biggest benefits of lightning, believe it or not, is that it causes fires. We usually see fires as a bad thing that destroy plants and property. Lightning starts about 12% of all forest fires in the United States. With over 60% of these in the Rocky Mountains area and fewer than 2% in the east. Most lightning started fires burn fewer than 10 acres of growth. But botanists and other scientists have long known that. Fires are beneficial to keeping forests and grasslands healthy. Many plants, indeed, drop seeds that can only germinate after they have been burned. And fires clear away old growth and allow new plants to thrive. Another benefit to both plants and animals is that lightning strokes convert gaseous nitrogen. And two into nitrates, NO3, by adding energy to the air, which causes nitrogen atoms to bond with oxygen. Nitrates are a vital part of the food chain, plants need them to survive. And animals get them by eating plants or other animals that eat plants. About half the world's naturally occurring nitrates are created by lightning. The other half is generated by bacteria living inside plants such as legumes. Scientists estimate that 200 billion pounds, 91 billion kilograms, of nitrates are created every year through the action of lightning. In other words, without lightning, plant and animal life on Earth would be severely depleted. What is UVA and UVB radiation? VA and UVB are two categories within the ultraviolet range. UVA radiation has a wavelength between 320 and 400 nanometers. And UVB has a range of 290 to 320 nanometers. The more energetic UVB radiation is considered more dangerous to people. As it can lead to malignant melanomas. UVA can also potentially cause cancer. But is more likely to just cause unsightly wrinkles and leathery skin. This is why dermatologists and other physicians always recommend using sunscreen to prevent damage from ultraviolet radiation. Does the Earth's tilt ever change? Yes. Our planet actually wobbles a bit, like a spinning top running out of steam. Currently, the axial tilt of our planet is about 23.5 degrees. 
which is somewhere in the middle of its total capable range of 22.1 to 24.5 degrees. The change in tilt occurs over a period of about 41,000 years. How bright is lightning? The light from a lightning bolt is equal to the amount of illumination from about 100 million light bulbs. Where in the tropics are you safe from a hurricane? Hurricanes do not strike within 5 degrees latitude on either side of the equator. Therefore, if you wish to live in the sunny tropics and have a healthy fear of hurricanes, you may want to investigate real estate deals near the equator. Who first photographed a sprite? In 1989, while experimenting with low-light video cameras for use in high-altitude rockets, University of Minnesota scientists Robert Nemzek, John Winkler, and Robert Franz accidentally captured images of sprites. This quickly piqued the interest of NASA scientists at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, who managed to record more examples of sprites. Later successes of taking pictures or video of sprites came from Walter Lyons, who filmed over 240 sprites on July 7, 1993, and Dava Sintman and Eugene Westcott of the University of Alaska, who used a NASA aircraft to film sprites that same month. What is La Nina? It's pretty easy to guess that La Nina would be the opposite of El Nino. Instead of warm waters in the tropical Pacific, the surface waters are inordinately cool. In 2009, predictions were for a La Nina to dominate Pacific waters. What is an acoustic shadow? An acoustic shadow is kind of like a mirage, only involving sound instead of light. Differences in temperatures at varying atmospheric layers causes sound waves to refract or bend. Also wind shears and the absorption of sound on soft surfaces can contribute to the effect. The result can be that sounds coming from a particular source might not be heard by someone standing fairly close by, while other people located farther away. But in a direction where sounds are being refracted, can hear the sound. A famous example the consequences of acoustic shadow is often cited from the U.S. Civil War. During the 1862 Battle of Seven Pines in Richmond, Virginia, Confederate General Joseph Johnston told his commanders that upon hearing gunfire from soldiers being led under Major General D.H. Hill, he would order Brigadier General W.H.C. Whiting to send in an attack on the Union's flank. 
however, because of acoustic shadow. Johnston was unable to hear the battle noise and the flank attack was not sent in when it was needed. The Confederates subsequently lost the battle. What is the difference between the ecliptic plane and Earth's equatorial plane? The equatorial plane is the plane of Earth's equator extended indefinitely out into space. It turns out that Earth's rotation around its axis is not lined up with the ecliptic plane. Instead, Earth is tilted about 23.5 degrees. This tilt is the main cause of the seasons on Earth. Are wind farms a good way to solve the energy crisis and global warming? Power from wind farms seems like it would be a very good solution to at least some of our energy needs. Wind, though unreliably fickle, is free, does not require mining, and is clean. Also, windmills and generators have been improving to make this technology more economical. Currently, wind power supplies about 0.1% of the world's electricity. But that is growing at a rate of about 30% a year. There are problems with wind farms, however. For one thing, the giant windmills you find in places like Southern California kill birds and other animals. Any hapless bird who flies near one is apt to be chopped into bits. Some conservationists are worried this could actually kill some birds on the endangered species. List a 2002 study conducted in Spain of its wind farms noted that 350,000 bats, 3 million small birds, and 11,200 birds of prey were killed by windmills and associated power lines in just one year. The Altamont Pass Wind Resource Area near Palm Springs, California, which consists of 4,900 windmills is responsible for the deaths of 4,700 birds annually, about one per windmill. Including 1,300 raptors, birds of prey, such as burrowing owls and golden eagles. Because of increasingly limited land space, some countries are building wind farms offshore. For example, England is constructing a new wind farm that will cover 145 square miles. 375 square kilometers, off the Kent, Essex, Clacton, and Margate coastlines. Such offshore farms, of course, now pose a threat to seabirds. Another fact is that wind farms take up a lot of space. Situated on hillsides and open plains, they effectively destroy what could be wildlife habitat. Each windmill takes up about 1,600 square feet, 144 square meters, of space. Furthermore, building the vast wind farms needed to power cities takes a lot of resources including the steel, concrete, and other materials needed to build and maintain windmills and the oil and gasoline that is burned during construction.
who introduced use of the millibar to measure air pressure. English meteorologist William Napier Shaw, 1854-1945, was one of the leading scientists in his field. And former director of Britain's meteorological office from 1905 to 1920. He suggested that air pressure be measured in millibars in 1909. But it was not adopted as an international standard until 1929. Is a halo around the sun or moon a sign of rain or snow approaching? The presence of a ring around the sun or, more commonly, the moon in the night sky betrays very high ice crystals composing cirrostratus clouds. The brighter the ring, the greater the odds of precipitation and the sooner it may be expected. Rain or snow will not always fall, but two times out of three. Precipitation will start to fall within 12 to 18 hours. These seraform clouds are a forerunner of an approaching warm front and an associated low pressure system. What is the purpose of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA? NOAA is an agency within the U.S. Department of Commerce that is responsible for monitoring conditions on land and in the seas that have an effect on our weather, climate, and environment. NOAA is, of course, heavily involved in atmospheric research and weather forecasting. But the agency also supports the responsible management of fisheries, is concerned with marine commerce, and is involved in studies to prevent coastal erosion, among many other projects. In essence, NOAA is interested in fostering the economic and environmental health of the country, as well as the safety of its citizens, through scientific management of oceanic, coastal, and mainland resources. What is TEFRA? Tephra is the name given to all the material that erupts from a volcano, excluding lava. Tephra comes in all shapes and sizes, and is also referred to as pyroclastic material, fire particles. A pyroclast is material that is ejected during the explosive eruption of a volcano in the form of fragments. Pyroclastic material that is hot enough to Fused together before it falls to the ground is called welded or volcanic tuff. Geologists classify tephra according to size. The following lists the most common types of tephra. Ash ash is material smaller than approximately a tenth of an inch. 2 millimeters, that is emitted from an erupting volcano. It can also contain lapilli, also called cinders or little stones, which is between 1 and 25 inches, 2 and 64 centimeters. In a large eruption, ash can accumulate to a great thickness and spread out for thousands of miles. Usually in the direction of the prevailing winds. 
Block blocks are solid rock emitted from an erupting volcano. They can be anywhere from the size of a baseball to the size of a boulder as large as a house. Bombs bombs are volcanic rocks that are still molten inside. They are shaped by their passage through the air. They form the brilliant arc seen in time-lapse photography of volcanic eruptions. Typically ranging from baseball to basketball size, they can be as large as a house. Bombs, and blocks, can be ejected from a volcano with initial velocities greater than 1,000 miles. 1,609 kilometers per hour, and can travel more than 3 miles, 5 kilometers. With some exploding and gushing molten rock when they eventually strike the ground. There are also certain types of bombs, including spindle bombs. Very fluid magma chunks that are streamlined as they fly through the air, and bread crust. Which is formed from viscous magma, creating rounded blobs that often have fractured surfaces. What is a bolt from the blue? This expression relates to the fact that lightning can strike even when there is no rain and the sun has come out. In other words, blue sky may appear overhead, but there may still be lightning generating clouds nearby. But how do they form? One argument is that they come from airplanes, but not from toilet drainage because this would mean contaminants and cleaners would be found in these large ice stones. However, ice might still form and break off of airplanes while in flight. And since it could take as much as three minutes for such a piece of ice to reach the ground, such megacree meteors might seem to come from out of the blue because the jet plane is long gone by then. A growing number of meteorologists, however, do not buy into the airplane scenario. They speculate that cooling and water vapor conditions within the tropopause that are still little understood may explain the formation of megacree meteors. Regions are the central plains in the United States and Canada, Central Europe, and parts of the Ukraine. Southern China, Argentina, and parts of Central and South Africa and Southeastern Australia. Can you see a tornado using Doppler radar? No. Doppler radar can tell meteorologists if conditions within a storm are favorable for tornadoes such as strong winds and cloud rotation but it can't actually see a tornado. What is numerical weather prediction? Numerical weather prediction or numerical forecasting is the science that believes that weather forecasting is possible if one has a thorough knowledge of the laws of physics and also knows the current state of the weather. 
proposed by a group of Norwegian scientists collectively known as the Bergen School. The idea was that air behaves much like a fluid. And that it therefore adheres to the hydrodynamical equations that liquids like water do. Knowing the current state of the weather is vital, and so numerical forecasting relies heavily. On having detailed weather reports from multiple locations before predictions can be made. Once this is available, mathematical formulas are applied to the weather's current state. Based on the principles of thermodynamics, the Boyle's law, Newtonian physics, and so on. If neutrinos are so elusive, how do scientists observe them striking Earth? It is possible to detect neutrinos from space by their very rare interactions with matter here on Earth, but not with conventional telescopes. The first effective neutrino detector was set up in 1967 deep underground in the Homestake Gold Mine near Leeds, South Dakota. There, the American scientists Ray Davis, Jr., 1914, and John Bacal, 1934 to 2005 set up a tank filled with 100,000 gallons of nearly pure perchlorate. Used as dry cleaning fluid, and monitored the liquid for very rare neutrino interaction events. Other experiments have since used other substances, such as pure water, for neutrino detections. What do many scholars believe caused the flood that Noah and his family survived in the Bible? Some archaeologists believe that, sometime between the years 5400 B.C.E. and 5200 B.C.E., the Euphrates River flooded the surrounding valley covering an area of about 40,000 square miles, about 104,000 square kilometers. Although this flood did not encompass the globe, to those living in the area it certainly would have seemed like the end of the world and it could have inspired the well-known biblical story. What is barometric pressure and what does it mean? Barometric, or atmospheric, pressure is the force exerted on a surface by the weight of the air above that surface. As measured by an instrument called a barometer. Pressure is greater at lower levels because the air's molecules are squeezed under the weight of the air above. So while the average air pressure at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch, at 1,000 feet, 304 meters, above sea level, the pressure drops to 14.1 pounds per square inch and at 18,000 feet, 5,486 meters, the pressure is 7.3 pounds, about half of the figure at sea level. Changes in air pressure bring weather changes. High pressure areas bring clear skies and fair weather, low pressure areas bring wet or stormy weather. Areas of very low pressure have serious storms, such as hurricanes.
What is a storm surge? Not to be confused with a tsunami, a storm surge is a sudden upwelling of ocean water caused by winds and pressure changes affecting the water's surface. Hurricanes generate large wave swells that radiate outwards in all directions as they travel over the ocean. The swells, which can move toward the shoreline about three or four times faster than the actual storm, arrive on land before hurricanes strike. Before advanced weather systems and the use of satellites. These swells warned people that a hurricane was approaching. The swells become storm surges by the time the main storm arrives. Raising water levels as much as 25 feet, 7.5 meters, and causing massive coastal flooding. By some estimates, the storm surge resulting from 2005's Hurricane Katrina was 28 feet, 8.5 meters. What is a swamp cooler? A swamp cooler is an alternative to a traditional air conditioner. A traditional air conditioner uses compressed freon gas to cool the air. This system works very well in most climates where the humidity is above 30%. In drier climates, below 30% humidity, a swamp cooler is very effective. Also called an evaporative cooler, a swamp cooler works sort of like a wet bulb thermometer. Pads inside the cooler absorb water, and a fan then blows on the pads. Cooling the air and making it more humid. Swamp coolers are more energy efficient than regular air conditioners because the only electricity needed is what is used for the fan, no compressor is required. What causes avalanches? The most dangerous conditions for an avalanche occur when a lot of snow has fallen and slash or blowing. Wind has caused snow to accumulate within a short period of time, hours or a few days, versus weeks. A dry slab avalanche is the most hazardous. This is when a heavy slab of snow that has formed quickly is resting above. Another layer of snow that is weaker but formed over a longer period of time. Dry slab avalanches are usually set off by a person walking over the unstable layer. There are also wet slab avalanches, which, as one might guess, involve a layer of wet snow over a harder layer of snow. Avalanches are most likely to occur on hills with inclines of 30 to 45 degrees. Though wet snow can tumble down a hill with a grade of as little as 10 degrees. And dry snow regularly causes avalanches on hills with about 20 to 22 degree slopes. Avalanches happen abruptly, and once a slab has broken off. There is usually no escape for someone downhill. Traveling at 60 to 80 miles, 95 to 130 kilometers per hour, an avalanche will quickly bury everything in its path.
What was the first satellite used for monitoring the weather? The first man-made satellite used to monitor weather conditions was the television and infrared observation satellite. Tyros I, which was launched by NASA on April 1, 1960. While the photographs taken were not of the high-resolution standards we see today, they were the first to reveal just how clouds and storms can be remarkably well organized, a fact that surprised meteorologists at the time. Tyro's eye's other groundbreaking accomplishment was to spot a previously undetected tropical storm near Australia nine days after its launch. Australians along that country's east coast were thus the first people. Thanks to modern technology, to get a heads up that a strong storm was approaching. What is a London killer fog? Despite its history of air pollution dating back centuries, Londoners seemed slow to learn from their mistakes. Air pollution from coal burning continued into the 1960s. The sulfur dioxide combined with London's famous fog, with the result being acid fog. In 1952, the thick fog became so dense that people could not see to walk or drive. Influenza, bronchitis, and pneumonia cases skyrocketed, and about 4,000 people died and another 100. 000 were sickened that year from illnesses related to this killer fog. What role did Walter Maurice Elsasser play in discovering the magnetic field? German-born American physicist Walter Maurice Elsasser, 1904-1991, was the scientist who discovered that the Earth's magnetic field is generated as a result of how the planet's hot core acts like a dynamo. He also brilliantly discovered that analysis of rock particles reveal clues about the orientation of the Earth's magnetic field over time, which in turn contributed to the science of plate tectonics and the history of Earth's climate. What is an urban heat island? Because urban areas are generally devoid of significant vegetation, the concrete and other construction materials for buildings and roads prevent the heat from the sun from being absorbed. Instead, surfaces become hotter and drier. Cities and towns become warmer than surrounding rural areas to the point where, on a warm summer day, surfaces such as sidewalks and roofs can be as much as 50 degrees to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 27 to 50 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surrounding air. The warming effects are especially pronounced during the day. But the temperatures are also affected at night. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, a city of about 1 million people can cause the surrounding atmosphere to heat up as much as 22 degrees Fahrenheit, 12 degrees Celsius, more than it would be under similar weather conditions in a rural area. 
annually, the effect would be that the overall temperature for a city that size would be 1.8 to 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit. 1 to 3 degrees Celsius, higher than in the surrounding areas. There are several problems that result from heat islands, people tend to use their air conditioners and other utilities more. Thus increasing energy consumption, this leads to more pollution, including greenhouse gases. These pollutants also affect human health, finally, rainwater that has fallen onto heated surfaces on. Pavement and roofs flows into sewers, and then into the environment, where the heated water affects wildlife. Has an asteroid ever hit Earth? Yes. In fact, the extinction of the dinosaurs is believed to have resulted from an asteroid. Striking the Earth near the shoreline of what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. There is also speculation that, 13,000 years ago, a comet or large asteroid smashed into the planet and wiped out the Native American Clovis civilization, as well as mastodons, mammoths, and other large animal species that once roamed North America. This sort of impact is, of course, extremely rare. Today, astronomers estimate that small asteroids approach Earth and burn up in the atmosphere at a rate of about two or three a year. In October 2008, scientists were excited to have accurately predicted that a small asteroid 2008 TC3, measuring about 15 feet, 4.5 meters, across, would enter the atmosphere. It was the first time that NASA's near-Earth object program had successfully anticipated such an event. How much water is in the world's oceans? Earth is about 70% covered by oceans and seas. And about 97% of the world's total water is contained in the oceans. 2% of this water is in the form of ice. Why is it more likely to rain in a city during the week than on the weekend? Urban areas have an increased likelihood of precipitation during the work week because intense activity from factories and vehicles produce particles that allow moisture in the atmosphere to form raindrops. These same culprits also produce warm air that rises to create precipitation. A study of the city of Paris found that precipitation increased throughout the week and dropped sharply on Saturday and Sunday. What is the difference between the Aurora Borealis and the Aurora Australis? The Aurora Borealis is the name for aurorae that appear in the Northern Hemisphere. While the Aurora Australis appears in the Southern Hemisphere.
How does the magnetosphere help animal behavior on Earth? Earth's magnetic field is also very important to animals. On Earth that migrate or otherwise travel long distances. Some animals have impressive built-in magnetic sensors. Biologists have shown that many migratory birds figure out where to fly by using Earth's magnetic field to guide them. Humans, too, benefit from the magnetosphere by using magnetic compasses to figure out which way is north or south. Why does the Earth's orbit change from circular to elliptical over time? Like all the planets in our solar system, our world is subjected to the gravitational tugs of not only the Sun, but all the other planets as well. We know that our moon causes tides and other gravitational effects that we can see every day. But Earth's orbit is also influenced by the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn. These planets are big enough to pull Earth's orbit out of shape as they circle the Sun. Then the Sun's gravity eventually pulls it back again in an extremely slow tug of war. What happened in the 1940s and 1950s that gave hope to the science of numerical weather prediction? Hungarian-American mathematician John von Neumann, 1903-1957, devised a forerunner of the modern computer that could make the rapid calculations needed to predict the weather using the numerical forecasting method. Next, Princeton University meteorologist Jewel Charney, 1917-1981 Having studied Richardson's earlier failure, wrote revised formulas in 1946 that could be used for weather prediction with the help of von Neumann's computer. With this background foundation in place, in 1950 the first successful weather forecast using the numerical method was completed in April, 1950, by the ANIAC computer at Maryland's Aberdeen Proving Ground. An ongoing weather forecast service was then begun in 1955, using an IBM computer funded by the National Weather Service, and the U.S. Navy and Air Force. Who invented the device to measure humidity? The hygrometer, which measures humidity in the atmosphere, was invented by the French physicist Guillaume Montons, 1663-1705. Where does it snow on the equator? Mountainous regions on or near the equator regularly get snow. For example, it snows in the Andes Mountains in Ecuador. And in Africa snow falls on Mt. Kenya and Mt. Kilimanjaro.
Why do clouds float? Cloud droplets are, actually, subject to the Earth's gravity, and so they do, in fact, fall. They do so very slowly, however, and are subject to winds and air pressure that keep them aloft. When not being blown about, cloud droplets descend at a rate of about 30 feet per hour. Are the gases in the atmosphere evenly distributed? You are not likely to stroll down a street and encounter a suddenly high concentration of oxygen or a pocket of unmixed argon gas. The constant motion of the weather due to fronts, pressure changes. Varying temperatures, storms, and so on, is like putting the atmosphere in a food processor and hitting the blend button, and never turning it off. The percentage of each gas, therefore, will be constant anywhere below an elevation of 50 or 60 miles, 80 to 95 kilometers. How much air pollution does the United States produce? According to the Environmental Protection Agency, there is some good news in that air pollution has been slowly declining in the United States. For example, Carbon monoxide emissions have gone down from 178 million tons, 161.5 metric tons. In 1980 to 81 million tons, 73.5 million metric tons, in 2007. Volatile Organic Compounds, Vox. And sulfur dioxide have both been cut in half from 30 to 15 million tons 27.2 to 13.6 metric tons. For Vox and 26 down to 13 million tons 23.6 to 11.8 metric tons for so too, over the same time period. And nitrogen oxides have been lowered from 27 to 17 million tons, 24.5 to 15.4 metric tons. Overall, from 1980 to 2007, air pollutant rates have dropped from 267 million tons. 242 metric tons, produced annually to 129 million tons, 117 metric tons. This is still a lot of pollution, without question, but it is significant progress. Especially considering that the U.S. population has risen from about 226 million people in 1980 to 300 million in 2007. What is a hook echo? A hook echo also called a hook pattern is a warning sign that a tornado has possibly formed. On radar, the echo looks kind of like the number 6 and is associated with a mesocyclone within a storm. So it is called a tornado IC mesocyclone. The distinctive hook shape was first seen on April 9, 1953, by electrical engineer Donald Staggs who was monitoring the radar system at the Illinois State Water Survey in Champaign. 
A hook echo does not necessarily indicate a tornado has definitely formed. But it is a strong indication that it has. On the other hand, tornadoes can and do form without the telltale hook echo ever being seen. What is the enhanced Fujita scale? Proposed by the National Weather Service in February 2006, and first put into use on February 1, 2007, the Enhanced Fujita Scale, EFS, was created to better reflect actual damages recorded since the original Fujita Scale was developed. Meteorologists have recently concluded that structures could be Damaged by tornado DIC winds that were slower than previously thought. The original scale, which was felt to be too general, did not take into careful enough account the different types of construction. And it was hard to evaluate tornadoes that struck in low populated areas where not many structures were present. The new scale also offers more detailed descriptions of potential damages by using 28 damage indicators that describe building types, structures, and vegetation, accompanied by a degrees of damage scale. Otherwise, the EFS uses the same categories, ranking tornadoes from 0 up to 5. What are some other types of anemometers? Besides the rotating cup anemometer, there is the sonic anemometer, swinging plate, or pressure plate. Anemometer, pressure tube anemometer, bridled, or windmill, anemometer, and the aerovane. Weather stations often use sonic anemometers, which calculate both wind speed and direction. Four ultrasound transducers are set up in a circle. Evenly spaced apart, in two pairs placed across from each other. A transducer will send out an ultrasonic signal to the one directly across from it. Winds blowing across this path will cause the signal to travel faster, slower, or change direction, thus indicating wind conditions. Pressure plate and pressure tube anemometers work by the fact that wind blowing against a plate or through a tube will exert a measurable pressure. Aerovanes and windmill anemometers can measure both speed and direction. As the blades on these devices spin, it is possible to calculate wind speed. And both will turn into the oncoming wind, which indicates direction. How do you calculate how far away a lightning bolt is? After you see a flash of lightning, count the number of seconds until you hear the thunder. Divide the number of seconds by 5. And the result is the number of miles away that the lightning occurred. What is diamond dust?
Diamond dust, also known as ice prisms, are tiny ice crystals that can form in the air on extremely cold days if the air contains enough moisture. The effect can be quite beautiful, as sparkling, barely visible crystals appear in mid air on sunny days. Catching the sunlight and, indeed, appearing as if they are tiny diamond chips wafting in the breeze. How fast do the strongest hurricane winds blow? The strongest hurricanes have winds that reach speeds over 200 miles, 322 kilometers, per hour. Friction with the Earth's surface prevents winds from blowing faster than 225 miles. 362 kilometers per hour. Can lightning travel through the ground? Yes. When lightning reaches the ground, the electrical energy can travel through the ground from some distance away. If you are standing nearby, the energy can then enter through your feet. This is also how multiple people or animals can be injured by a single lightning bolt. What was the most important weather book to follow Meteorologica? Aristotle's student Theophrastus of Ersus, c. 372-287 BCE, continued his mentor's study of weather with his on weather signs. A book that became the last word on weather. It was consulted all the way through about the 12th century. When it was still used by scholars of the Byzantine Empire. As a predictor of weather, the book strove to describe how to tell when rain, wind, and storms were coming. Theophrastus's version of meteorology, though, was still a mix of well reasoned observation and superstition. What is a snow roller? People aren't the only ones who enjoy building snowmen. Sometimes, nature gets into the game as well. In windy, wintry conditions, breezes have been known to start small collections of snowflakes rolling. As they roll, snow accumulates, and the snowball gets bigger and bigger. Such snow rollers have been known to grow to diameters of several feet. What factors affect the weather? It has been said that a butterfly flapping its delicate wings in China will set off a series of events that will eventually result in a hurricane in the Gulf Coast. Weather is extremely complex. So much so that weather forecasting is a highly speculative profession. Some people joke that being a weather broadcaster is the only job you
can find where you can be wrong half the time and still stay employed. Weather is affected by temperature, atmospheric composition, land formations, radiation, plate tectonics. Geothermic energy, solar winds, biological processes from plants and animals, pollution, and more. All of these factors are considered in this book. How much carbon dioxide am I producing when I drive my car or truck? According to the Environmental Protection Agency, burning a gallon of gasoline creates 19.4 pounds, 8.8 kilograms, of carbon dioxide. Burning a gallon of diesel fuel creates 22.2 pounds, 10 kilograms, of carbon dioxide. So, for example, if you have a 15 mile, one way commute to work, work 250 days a year. And drive a gas powered sedan that gets 18 miles per gallon. You would produce over 8,000 pounds, 3,600 kilograms, of carbon dioxide pollution annually. Multiply that by the number of people driving every year worldwide, and you can see the problem. Has the Hudson River ever frozen over? The Hudson River in New York State extends about 300 miles, 483 kilometers. From Lake Tier of the Clouds on Mount Marcy down to New York Bay. When people think of the Hudson, what comes to mind is the part of the river that flows through the New York metropolitan area. This section does not freeze often, the last time being in January of 1918. However, at the higher elevations near the river's source, the Hudson freezes quite regularly. How is seawater salinity measured? The amount of salts in seawater is important because it affects ocean currents, which, in turn, affect the world's climate. Seawater contains a variety of dissolved elements, including chlorine. Sodium, magnesium, calcium, sulfur, and potassium. In the past, measurements of salinity were taken simply by going out onto the ocean. Filling a bucket with sea water, and testing the salt levels by measuring electrical conductivity, the more salts. The quicker electricity flows through the water because there are more ions present. There are also techniques to measure chlorine or other dissolved elements. More recently, sophisticated equipment has become available for measuring ocean salts remotely. Low-frequency radiometers mounted on C-130 aircraft can scan the ocean during flights. Covering over 38 square miles, 100 square kilometers, every hour. The European Space Agency plans to launch its Soil Moisture and Ocean Salinity SMOS. satellite in 2009 to take readings from space using a two-dimensional interferometric radiometer.
a new technology that captures images based on microwave radiation emitted at a frequency of 1.4 GHz, GHz. What is the effect of a microburst on aircraft? Microbursts are downbursts of air with a diameter of 2.5 miles, 4 kilometers, or less. Often associated with thunderstorms. They can generate winds of hurricane force that change direction abruptly. Headwinds can become tailwinds in a matter of seconds, forcing aircraft to lose air speed and altitude. After microbursts caused several major air catastrophes in the 1970s and 1980s. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, installed warning and radar systems at airports to alert pilots when conditions were right for wind shears and microbursts. If a parhelion is a sun dog, what is an anthelion? Also caused by hexagonal ice crystals in the air, an anthelion is like a parhelion. Except that it is seen at the azimuth opposite the sun. What petition have thousands of scientists signed that says that global warming is not caused by people? Over 31,000 American scientists have signed the global warming petition. Which states that global warming is not caused by human activities, that there are actually many benefits to having a warmer planet. And that the United States should continue to reject the Kyoto Protocol. Looking at trends in such areas as ocean temperatures, solar activity, glacier shrinkage, and severe storm events. These scientists assert that upwards trends in all of these areas have been occurring since the 1800s. They believe, therefore, that policies limiting industrial and economic development are misplaced. What is an Ekman spiral? Van Wafford Ekman, 1874-1954, a Swedish physicist and oceanographer, discovered that a combination of the Coriolis effect, the movement of surface waters, and the friction caused by winds blowing on the ocean surface have an influence on current direction. In the northern hemisphere, the end result is that currents will be pushed to the right. And in the south the opposite occurs, forming spirals like weak whirlpools in the water. The effect, however, penetrates the ocean surface only to a degree. The null point, as the influence of these factors weakens with water depth. The layer affected by the spiral is called the Ekman layer. Scientists have noted that the Ekman spiral is most obvious underneath sea ice. Because waves and other forces in the open sea nearly cancel out the effect. However, the Ekman spiral also applies to the Earth's atmosphere, where they are seen in surface winds.
who created the first anti-air pollution law in Western history. England's King Edward I proclaimed in 1306 c. E that coal burning was to be restricted while Parliament was in session. The penalty for violating this law was rather harsh by today's standards, death. What are cooperative weather observers? While the U. S. government funds many weather stations throughout the country. The cost of supporting all of the stations that would be necessary to fully observe the weather everywhere would be prohibitive. Thankfully, volunteers known as cooperative weather observers assist by taking readings and measurements about winds. Temperatures, precipitation, and so forth. Providing this data to meteorologists in cooperation with the National Weather Service and the National Climatic Data Center. How much does it rain in the Amazonian rainforest? The largest rainforest in the world surrounds the Amazon River Basin. Most of which lies within the borders of Brazil. Here, the average rainfall is 80 inches, 200 centimeters, annually. Interestingly, despite all the rain and thick forest growth, the soil in the Amazon region is quite sterile and not well suited to farming. What are some other catabatic wines called? In addition to the Chinook, the Santa Ana winds that flow down the Sierras in Southern California. And the Taku, which is a frigid wind in Alaska, are both examples of catabatic winds. Who helped link CFCs to the destruction of the ozone layer? Mexican atmospheric chemist Mario J. Molina, full name, Jose Mario Molina Pascal Enriquez 1943- And American atmospheric chemist Frank Sherwood Rowland, 1927. Are generally acknowledged as the scientists who first explained how chlorofluorocarbons were destroying the ozone layer. A paper they published together in 1974 first explained how the process works about four years. After scientists began to understand that ozone levels were declining in the upper atmosphere. The result of their work led the United States government to ban CFCs in aerosol cans in 1978. What are the different size categories for hailstones? In the United States, the following terms are used to describe the size of hailstones in weather reports. The actual sizes of the hailstones often don't match up to their supposed similes.
What is the difference between a cyclone and a typhoon? The words cyclone and typhoon are simply other words for hurricane. When hurricanes occur west of the international dateline in the northwest Pacific Ocean, they are referred to as typhoons. And when they occur in the Indian Ocean and near Australia, they are called cyclones. What is the global average temperature? Data on temperatures for the 20th century which includes both land and ocean surface temperatures, averaged to 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit 12 degrees Celsius. A 2007 assessment showed that, during the early years of the 21st century, average temperatures were already up 1.28 degrees Fahrenheit 0.71 degrees Celsius compared to the previous century averages. This data includes a very warm year in 2002, though 1998 was actually the warmest year since 1990. And the fact that, taken by themselves, land surface temperatures have been particularly warmer, 3.4 degrees Fahrenheit 1.89 degrees Celsius. Ocean surface temperatures in 2007 were the fourth warmest in a record database spanning 128 years. What are pollution hot spots? Levels of pollution are not consistent throughout polluted areas such as industrialized cities. For example, car emissions along freeways raise air pollutants significantly in adjacent areas. And air quality inside tunnels and parking garages is considerably worse because of limited ventilation. Other potential hotspots include areas, whether urban or rural that lie downwind of factories and power plants. Where can I find reliable climate statistics online? There are many websites about the weather available on the internet, some are better than others. You can get lots of information from government websites. Such as the National Weather Service at http colon slash slash weather. Gov and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration at http. Slash slash www.noaa.gov there are also some online databases available. World Climate at http colon slash slash www.worldclimate.com is a searchable online database that includes more than 85,000 climate statistics from all over the world. By typing in the name of a city, you can obtain data concerning rainfall and temperature. Weatherbase at http Slash slash www.weatherbase.com has information on nearly 16,500 cities around the world. It even lets you pick whether you want to see statistics in metric or U.S. units. What is the Vortex Project?
Vortex stands for verification of the origin of rotation in tornadoes experiment. Conducted at the National Severe Storms Laboratory from 1994 to 1995, the project was led by Eric Rasmussen. And the goal was to conduct intense data gathering using weather balloons. Airplanes, turtles, and cars equipped with radars and taking photographs. The study focused on tornadoes formed in supercells and collected so much data that it took years to analyze it all. Who else formed theories that ice ages occur in cycles? Before Milankovic, French mathematician Joseph Adhemar 1797-1862, published his book Revolutions of the Sea in 1842. In it, he suggested ice ages occur in 22. 000 year cycles that matched the precession of the equinoxes. Scottish geologist James Crawl 1821 to 1890, later elaborated on this theory. However, scientists did not know enough about the history of ice ages to compare this theory with actual data. And so the hypothesis languished for another century. What is frostbite? Frostbite occurs when people are exposed to cold temperatures. For extended periods without sufficient protection. Skin and, if exposure is prolonged, deeper tissues including nerves and blood vessels, can be damaged beyond repair. Frostbite begins at the extremities, fingers, toes, ears, etc. As the body tries to protect vital organs by constricting blood vessels at the extremities. This moves warm blood toward the center of the body. While this natural adaptation is important for keeping the heart pumping and other organs working. If circulation is cut off too long in other areas, tissues will die. The first stage of frostbite is frostnip. Which is when skin begins to get numb but no damage to the tissues occurs. In first degree frostbite, ice crystals begin to form on the skin and a warming sensation in fingers or toes indicates the onset of second degree frostbite as the damage progresses to third degree frostbite extremities turn blue white or red and in the last stages fourth degree purple and then black at this advanced stage Sensation is lost as nerves die, and it may be necessary to amputate. The best way to avoid frostbite is to simply stay indoors. Especially if the wind chill is minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit minus 45.5 degrees Celsius or lower. If you must go outside, bundle up, don't drink alcohol or caffeinated beverages, and also avoid smoking. Drinking and smoking can both constrict blood vessels, thus speeding the formation of frostbite. 